Hello people, I have another video for you today. Now, um, first video in a couple of months, or three or four, five or six, I don't know, I don't remember. Um, first of all, I have a cold, that's why I sound a bit strange. Um, outside, the weather outside is very British, meaning that it's misty, rainy and cold as fuck. So I thought it would be a great idea to do a video, because I haven't done one of these in a long time. I hope I'll have more time in the coming months to do more of these, but you know, with work and all stuff, it's been really hard. Now, the video today is going to be on something that I like a lot and I like to talk about a lot and like to use a lot. Uh, a mouse, not just any mouse, this thing, the Razer Uruboros or something like that, I don't know how it's pronounced. Honestly, I think they, they, they look up in a dictionary and they find the strangest names they can find. And then they, they'll say, let's name our product that just to fuck with people. But hey, maybe not. Now, um, before I start talk about this, of course I'm gonna bring you guys closer in, you know, have a look at it and see all the stuff that it can do because it can't, it can do a lot of things. Uh, right from the get go, the premises for this video is gonna be the following: since this mouse is probably, not probably, certainly the most expensive, you know, production gaming mouse I have ever seen. Uh, standards are gonna be really 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 high so I am going to expect a lot, of, a lot of things out of it now I have used it for two months already so you know I've made up an opinion uh, as always this is not a specs reading video I'm gonna see specs go on Razer web, Razer's website uh, I'm just gonna be gonna share you know my experience with the mouse for for the past two months okay so I'm gonna bring you guys closer in so you can have a look okay now um, we're gonna have a closer look at the mouse. Um, I'm sorry that you know mouse is black, mouse pad is black, so detail isn't gonna be the sharpest. Uh, keep in mind, please, that the microphone I'm using is about eh, just out of shot, just right here. So you know all the noise you'll be hearing from like clicks and stuff like that is with the microphone being you know, very very close. Now, this is the mouse, the mouse itself. Uh, you know the way uh, it's set up right now. Um, first thing, very important to me, uh, as you know, mouse balance is something that I've talked about, you know, with in my previous videos, and it's something that's very important to me. So, if you place your fingers, you know, right, you know, below these two buttons, I want to be able to lift up the mouse with no problem, and you know, not have a tip forwards or backwards or stuff like that. And this one is perfect. So you know, Razer did a good job there. But that's not a surprise because they always do a good job on mouse balance. It's something that many people don't talk about for reasons I can't really understand. Now, uh, the most important thing about this mouse in terms of customization are these two side feet, side blades, whatever you want to call them. Now, these, I'm just gonna, you know, pop them out real quick. These bad boys, you can remove. They have magnets over here and they have, you know, feet or stuff like that. Let me just put these down. And you can replace them if you want with these again you know magnets they just really i, li I like this, this stuff a lot they just pop into place and you know listen to that listen how responsive that is you just take the mouse you know the glider thingy and it just pops into place that's really really nice and that's something i really really like uh i don't know what type of magnets these are but these are some good fucking magnets i know razor did a good really good job on choosing these i'm picking these now, um, if you put the smaller ones, you're gonna get a much you know, thinner mouse profile. But, another thing, very important. The big feet have this really, really big, you know, gliding um, Teflon feet. The, small, the smaller ones have really, really small gliding feet. Now, these two are gonna produce, you know, different uh, um, glide sensation, different mouse, tra different mouse motion and stuff like that. So, you know, that in itself is a customization element and it's something that I really, really, really like. And I wish, um, you know, more people would do stuff like this. Um, so, you know, choosing the smaller ones or the bigger ones is something that's up to you. But I've done something rather differently. And what I've done is this. Now, please keep in mind, I am a fingertip user, you know, so I fingertip my mouse like this. And I move it around and I pick it up and I do stuff like this. And the problem I've had is that my pinky finger, uh, I don't know how I can show you guys, uh, yeah, like this. my pinky finger would always, you know, just glide across the mouse pad itself and, you know, I really didn't have anywhere to put it. 
So what I do, come on, you see they don't really come out if unless you want them to come out. So they're not gonna, you know, be, you're not gonna drop them while you're gaming or stuff like that. What I've done now is I use on the left side the big the big mouse glider, and on the on the right side the small one. So you know now I have a place to rest my uh, little finger, you know, on top of this thing, and I can still do what I like, which is I like to do stuff like this all the time, you know, and I can still pick up my mouse. If I have the big mouse foot right here, you know, put right there, uh, I can't really, you know, pick up the mouse how I'm used to by touching the mouse pad. That's, that's just a personal preference of mine. And having been able to do that, this is the first mouse I've been able to do that on. You know, have this part soft, elong elongated, so I have somewhere to rest my, my uh, little finger. And also be able to use my, what's this called in English? I don't know, big finger, fuck it. Um, be able to do my big finger, you know, just pick up the mouse. That's something that's a big plus for me. Um, right. So, uh, mouse, these two bits, really, really good, good magnets, good stuff like that. But there is an issue over here. Oh, you know, very small issue, but as I said, big standards. Uh, so we're gonna talk about everything. The exterior of these mouse feet have two textures. This one, the big one is soft and the so smaller ones have rubber on it. I personally, you know, like both of them. It's just, you know, I don't, I don't really find the soft one or the rubber one to have a problem or anything. So that's fine. But um, on products, since I work, I work in marketing, I know about this stuff. Uh, there are two types of surfaces: A surface, which is something the customer sees, and B surface, which is something the customer doesn't see. Usually, A surface is the exterior, and B surface will be the interior. Now, on a regular mouse, you don't care what's inside, how it, how it looks inside. You care about how it looks on the outside and how it works inside. Uh, if you look inside the mouse feet, you'll see that this is just, you know, the plastic mold. It's not finished, it's not in shiny in any way. Normally that won't be a problem, but since you can see this, and being that this is such an expensive mouse, I would have expected that the area the customer can see, areas like this, I would have expected this to be a surface and be, you know, polished and shiny and possibly the same very good plastic as on the outside. But hey, you know, that's just nitpicking. That's really, really small. Cool. Next part about the customization, as you've seen, I've already did it. It's the back can elongate. You can move it you, if you have fucking enormous hands. Now, I'm gonna try and palm this mouse. And look at this. I mean, it's absolutely enormous. Um, you just press this thing here and it goes in, inside. I use it, it at its shortest possible uh, fall, uh, distance. Um, I like a mouse that's a bit compact, that's why I use it like this. And I have to be honest, I would have preferred it if it, it would have you know, an extra step to go even a bit closer, because that's how I like my mouse. I like my mouse to be you know, shorter, so when I pick it up, you know, I have this area right here. This is what I like to do. If you like something like this, um, maybe, you know, maybe this is for you. Um, if I were to, just a second, palm this mouse, I think that I would, you know, put it maybe two steps down and palm it like this. But that's not something I really do. So, you know, I just fold it to the smallest possible position. It has a click. I mean, listen to this. So, you know, it has, it has a very metallic click on each step. Uh, so, you know, it, it's locked into place and you're good to go. Uh, also, the back, this area right here, if you spin this little screw, you can change the angle of it. Personally, if you would be, uh, if I try to finger tip it like this, I have an issue where this part of the mouse touches the inside of my hand and it touches it in a way that I don't really like. So I found it for me, just a second, having it, you know, all the way up gives me uh, an area where the only part of the mouse that's touching my hand over here on the inside is this soft part. So I'm not touching you know, the sharper edge, I'm not touching this bit over here, I'm only touching the you know, soft part uh, on the back of the mouse. So you know, th this part of my hand touches over here. You know, even when I pick it up, that's all I touch. You know, that's, that's fine for me. I mean, it's comfortable mm, and it's something you know, that I've, I've, gotten, uh, I've gotten used to. Uh, the first day when I got it, I have to admit that this shape was a bit strange, you know, coming from a Taipan to this. 
but now I really don't have problems with it and I find that it's very actually very comfortable you know to use it in this manner okay now the mouse wheel has these small ridges on it it's actually isn't it it's very quiet and it spins very 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 easily uh, if I had to say something I would have actually preferred it to be a bit a bit harder to to use because if I use this for like you know switching weapons or, or anything like that I find myself that sometimes I switch too many of them if I just you know mash it but you know it's it's good it's it's smooth it's soft have your DPI buttons over here now you also have your battery indicator uh, you only have three steps but you know if you go into Razer's software you can see you know the actual percentage from one percent to hundred percent um, what I usually do now from experience what I from what I've used the mouse so far if you're on a full charge I can game heavily for maybe around four hours before I get to one battery level now when I see one level I just put it to charge that's just how I mean I mean anyway I really game for more than four hours straight because you know when you're gaming you're gonna be using the mouse more than when you're just you know browsing and stuff like that so I haven't really had a problem with the battery life that was something else I was concerned about you know moving from a wire to wireless mouse but if we're talking about battery let me just move this color cube over here and bring the, the thingy closer uh, this is the charging uh, port now I just want to dem demonstrate this because when I first got it you know these two pins have to line up with these two pins and when I got it I was doing I was trying to find this place but actually if you do it two or three times just place it here and it just goes in there I mean again with magnets this is such such a beautiful motion and I find myself that now I never have to f you know look for it basically from day two when I got it I was be able to just you know pop it in there first time and you pop it in there it starts to charge as with any high-end gaming mouse you can remove the cable from over here and you can make it a wireless mouse if you want that a wired sorry or if you want to charge the battery or you know with whilst you're playing but you know this is something that's very very elegant very beautiful to me you know from a you know as a technology thing as a gadget something that I really really like uh, this base also has a slightly sticky coating on it so you know when you pop it in there it's not gonna move from the desk or anything like that it's gonna be just just nice uh, have a listen to the clicks and this is I have a small complaint here so have a good listen the left click it's perfectly fine you know nice actuation force I don't have any problems with this now the right click I don't know if this is a problem with my mouse or with all of them, but have a listen. If I press it in the tip over here, it's perfectly fine. If I press it, you know, about this area, listen to this. You can hear that it squeaks sometimes. Now I don't know if this is a problem when you just a fault with my my ex example of it, or if this is a problem with all of them. Now honestly, if you're super super perfectionist, you would be able to go to warranty and have it changed. I think because of this, it's not such a big issue for me, so I'm not going to bother, you know, um, going to you know with you know, with an RMA just for a slightly squeaky click. But again, being that this is such an expensive product, I would have expected this to not exist and to be perfect. So that's a possible issue. Another thing, I like to clean my peripherals, keyboards, mouse, mouse pads, mouse mats a lot. When I saw these two huge holes over here, I thought this would be a disaster, you know, a magnet for dust and sweat and stuff like that. But I've discovered that if you just take, you know, a small aerosol can and just spray it a bit in there, it gets rid of all the dirt in there. So it's actually, you know, surprisingly easy to clean for such a complex design. Uh, let me just show you really quick because I haven't showed you yet. This is where the battery goes, you know, on the back. It looks kind of funny without the back on it. It's like a transformer. Um, how did I, I forgot how to do this? It's just a normal battery. This this is perfect because if you're gaming and you don't want to plug the cable in, if your battery dies, you can just pop another battery in there and you're good to go. Uh, the Mamba, I think, used to have a proprietary battery design, which is something I didn't really like. I prefer this, you know, normal battery 
rechargeable, rechargeable battery. Just pop that in there. It's actually you know, kind of a two-hand affair, right? Then you go on and you put your back in, clicks into place, and you're good to go. Uh, this you have on the bottom of the mouse, you have two locking buttons. Now, if I unlock these, just really quick, let me just do that. If I unlock these, you can actually press in this part over here. What this does is it turns the mouse uh, into like something like a sniper mode. So if you're gaming and you want to use a sniper, you just press this and it switches the DPI from what you have now to, for example, something like 800 or 400 or whatever you set in the Razer software, you know, so you can just you know, do those soft motions whilst you're sniping at high distance, as the long distance. And it only does this whilst you're holding it pressed, you know, just those one, two seconds. This is a nice feature for people who play, you know, a lot of shooters. I've tried it personally, it's not for me, but I'm not saying that some people won't use it. The good thing is, you don't want to use it. You can lock them because this side and this side do the same thing and now you know it doesn't work anymore again you know nice level of customization i really really like that um i find that this angle you know the front angle of the mouse is really really nice it's really a really good good look for it uh, in terms of lights you have lights over here on the wheel or on this side and on the battery indicator the razor logo itself is not illuminated but i'm guessing you guys already knew that well, um, just have a listen to it, how it, how it uh, sounds whilst you're moving. Keep in mind, this is Razor, Razor Manticore, uh, so it's, it's a hard mouse mat, which all hard, hard mouse mats are louder than soft ones. But, you know, it's, it's uh, no problem. Okay, last thing. Wait, I pick my mouse up a lot, like I said. I do this and there is a significant weight difference between this and the Taipan for example. Um, it took me about one or two days to get used to the weight of the mouse um, but it's not as bad as other wireless mice. I've seen wireless mice that I couldn't do this comfortably with. With this one sure it's a bit heavier than Taipan but uh, that being said it's surprisingly light for a wireless mouse especially a high performance wireless mouse. Right, so I think the best thing to do now is to move on to a conclusion. Okay, so you guys have seen all the specs, stuff like that, you know, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, I'm going to try to wrap up a conclusion. I know this video is going to be long, but you know, since it's a very expensive product, I thought I'd put a lot of time into it, you know, and try to explain uh, things as best I can. First of all, Let's start with the things that I do like about it. Um, as I've said before, I like the fact that you can remove these side grips, side blades. Um, that's you know something that I haven't really seen in a lot of mice. Um, you know, lateral grip is something that's very important for me, and it's something that's very important if you want a comfortable mouse. Um, <clears throat> I like the lovely magnets. They work really well, as I said. That I like that. Now, in terms of usability and user friendliness, um, ergonomically, I don't really have complaints about it. Uh, fits my hand well. Um, I like the ergonomics in the sense that I can customize it to my preferences. Now, um, tracking. That's something very important. Um, before this mouse, I've used a Taipan. Uh, before that, I've used a uh, Imperator. So, Taipan in terms of tracking, although people tend to complain, is perfectly, perfectly fine by me. I've never had a problem with it. Now, um, I do own, for example, a Razer Orochi. And although that's a very good wireless mouse, I can sometimes realize that it's wireless. It's not as sharp, you know, as a wired mouse. Um, with this one, and this is the most important thing, when I bought a wireless mouse, I was afraid that it might be poor at tracking, you know, that I would realize that it lags or stuff like that. Honestly, in games, online games, for example, like Battlefield 4 and Dota 2, because, you know, that's why, that's why I play online most of the time, uh, I have not noticed any lag. 
Now, for example, Battlefield, those are pretty action-packed games. You have to have, you know, quick response times and stuff like that. And there, there wasn't a single point where, you know, a click was registered with a noticeable delay, you know, on my level, on human level, because I'm sure there is a technical delay because of the wireless bit, but I can't notice it. And also in terms of movement, I haven't noticed any delay. Now, that in itself, having a wireless mouse, uh, have the same response time, you know, on a you know, basic user level uh, as a wired mouse, that in itself is pretty, pretty high praise for a wireless mouse. Um, so, you know, that being said, <coughs> um, I think that, you know, in terms of gaming, it's it's really good. But the argument is, the f is this. You can get, you know, a Type N, which tracks just as good as this, you know, oh, I don't see any noticeable performance because I use my Type N on my laptop right now and I switch a lot between my laptop and my PC, so I don't really notice any difference uh, between them. Um, why would you pay two times more, almost two times more, what the Type N costs for this, just for the wireless bit? Well, you know, of course, as with everything, you want to show off, maybe, you know, get the most expensive mouse you can buy. That's a factor. The customization of it is another, another thing. Uh, the fact that you can, you know, change the shapes as you, as you guys have seen, that's very, very important aspect. An aspect which um, a lot of other customizable mice out there have done, but I don't really feel like I haven't really found a perfect customizable mouse. This thing is not perfect in terms of its customization. I would have liked more, you know, as I said with the back, I would like like to see the back, you know, Come a bit, a bit closer, but that's you know just just that's just me. Um, yeah, so you know that's that. Now uh, another thing I like: if you switch between you know the two side grips, uh, as I've said, these have very very different size feet. So the the way the mouse glides is very different. So you know that again is a customization element, and most users might like that aspect. I like it also. <clears throat> now, things that I would have liked to have seen. Now, as you guys have seen, you have to use the dock thingy to put the mouse, you know, charge it, whatever, stuff like that. Um, I would have preferred to be able to use this mouse with my laptop. But that's not really an option because you have to carry both the mouse and the big stand with you. So you can't really do that, you know, if you pull your laptop so, uh, out on a table somewhere, you know, coffee shop, whatever, I don't know, I don't, I don't really do that, or at work. It's stupid to have to pull out the cable of the mouse, plug the cable in, and then have the stand, you know, with the mouse, and then use the mouse. I would have preferred to have seen something like, you know, a small USB dongle. Um, I realize that a big part of this mouse's performance is that stand, I realize that. So, okay, good, give us that, that's perfectly fine for, you know, desktop use. Uh, but when I want to take this mouse with me on the go, I'd have preferred to have like a USB dongle, you know, a small one, just plug it in my laptop uh, and, okay, fair enough, the mouse won't work, you know, won't have the same DPI, same pulling rate, it won't be as sharp. I can live with that because most of the time when I'm just, you know, I just go on my laptop, I do work or stuff like that, I don't really game, so I don't need, you know, sh uh, sharp response time. Um, now, that's something I wouldn't expect of, of any mouse, but since this is so fucking expensive, I would have expected all the bases to have been covered. And for me, although this is wireless, this is still a desktop mouse. It's not something I would carry with me just because of this little, you know, stand. It's not really user friendly. Plus the cable on that is very, very long. So, hey. Uh, another thing I really, really uh, like is the fact that they have given you, you know, a normal battery. Uh, Razer's Mamba, I think, had a proprietary battery type. You wanted another battery, you had to buy one from Razer. Whereas you have this battery, it dies whilst you're gaming. You don't want to plug the cable into the mouse. You just put, put another battery in there, boom, you know, and in 10 seconds, you are ready to go. That's, you know, very, a very nice aspect. Now, um, you guys have seen, you know, the, the squeak I have with the mouse, uh, with my mouse. Uh, I don't know if that's just a problem with this one, with this, uh, you know, example of it. But again, being it's so expensive, I wouldn't have expected to find quality issues with it. I wouldn't have expected to find 
build quality issues or material issues. I would have expected this thing to be fucking perfect for the amount of money they're charging us for it. Um, so, my experience so far with this has been very, very pleasant. And all the people that have come to my house, even those who are not tech savvy, when they see you know, that mouse put on the stand, it looks different. It looks good, especially with its design, its futuristic design and stuff like that. And people ask me, hey, what's that? That's a cool mouse, stuff like that. I mean, uh, people actually respond to it, which is something that nowadays, when we're surrounded by technology, you don't really see people responding that well you know, to a gadget, because it's a gadget in the end of the day. So, would I recommend you buying this mouse? Um, honestly, if you want a good Razer mouse, you can just go and buy a Taipan and you're going to be perfectly happy with it. If you want something different in terms of customization, first of all, um, and also in terms of design, because I have to say it looks really, really good, the design, they really did a good job designing it, uh, then you, can, you could go for something like this. Uh, it's not a mouse for everybody, just because of the fact that it's so expensive. Um, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. I, again, being that it's so expensive, I would have expected it to be perfect, but it's not, sadly, for uh, for us. Um, do I feel like, hey, I shouldn't have spent that much money? No, because my experience with it so far has been good, so I don't really have anything, you know, uh, that I, that puts me off really, really hard about it. Um, the weight is an issue, as, you, as I've told you, um, issue for people who grip their mouse as I do. If you're just a palm gripper, the weight won't probably be an issue for you. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, that was about it. You guys have seen all the things I have to say about it. You can make up your mind about it. Uh, keep in mind that I've, I'm using this mouse on a Razer Manti Core. Uh, and whilst we're on the subject, I'll just pop that in, just, you know, in this video, because I'm, I'm a lazy, I don't want to do another video. Um, my Razer Manticore, the one I've, I've owned for know, half a year, I, I don't remember, a long time, long time. Um, when I did a video on this, I said that this would be a good mouse pad if it lasted more than six months, more than the other hard mouse mats I've used. And it's just as good as new. 